Hi, my name is Benjamin. It has been quite a while since I made the last relearn tutorial video. Today I want to get you up to speed on one of the latest additions to relearn. Units. Units are a quite basic feature. In the upcoming episodes I will talk a lot about things like unit fx and unit track. So it's important that you know what the term unit means. As usual, I add a new relearn instance. As you can see in the list of plugins, relearn is nowadays called Helgobox. This is because the plugin doesn't just contain relearn anymore, but also playtime, a session view and clip launcher for Reaper. As soon as we add the plugin, we see our familiar relearn user interface. You need at least Helgobox 216 in order to see the new units feature. Units are essentially mini instances of relearn that run within one large relearn instance. In the past, whenever you wanted to add a controller to relearn, you would add a new instance. Let's recap how that worked. You would add a new relearn instance. You would give each instance a descriptive name. Let's display the two instances side by side. You would configure one of the instances with one controller, in our case the MIDI Fighter Twister. Then you would go ahead and configure the second instance with the other controller, in our case the Platform M+. As a result, both controllers would work at the same time. You can still do it like this, no problem. However, units provide an alternative. You can do all of that within one instance. Let's call it all controllers. By default, relearn shows the so-called main unit. Previously, we already set the input to the platform M plus device. Now let's set the output as well. I want to use this device for typical door control. So I go to the controller compartment and choose the icon platform M plus preset. The preset menu looks a bit different than in previous versions. We now have built-in factory presets. Factory presets don't need to be installed separately anymore. They are just there and they are separated from user presets. Ok, let's pick the preset. As we learned before, a controller preset does nothing more than describing the controller. We still need to assign a main preset and a main compartment in order to make the controller actually do something. Again, I choose a factory preset called door control. I will add a few tracks in order to show that this actually works. Ok, the faders work, the encoders work, the buttons work, this is nothing new for us. You can manage units using the button on the bottom left. We press add unit in order to add a new unit to this relearn instance with a randomly generated name. I want this unit to be the MIDI fighter twister unit. So we choose the input device and the output device. Here we can see something new. This list now only displays devices which are actually connected and enabled. All remaining devices are displayed in a submenu. As a short recap, if your device is disabled, you need to enable it in the Reaper settings. Now let's pick a suitable controller preset for the MIDI Fighter Twister. At this occasion I would like to talk a bit about how to pick the right controller preset. We can find two controller presets in this list, MIDI Fighter Twister Crit and MIDI Fighter Twister Numbered. Both controller presets describe the same controller, but they use different virtual control schemes. The crit preset exposes each encoder and each button according to its position on the grid. Let me explain what I mean by that by turning on the source filter. Now that I turn the encoders and press the buttons, you can see how their corresponding virtual controls in this preset are named. The first one is more or less called column one slash row one slash knob, simply because this is its position on the device. All control elements on the MIDI Fighter Twister 
are arranged on the two-dimensional surface like a grid. You should use such a grid controller preset whenever you want to use or create a main preset that is compatible with grid controllers. For example, a main preset that controls playtime, the new clip launcher contained in Helgo Box. But for this demonstration, I want to take the numbered preset. The virtual control scheme numbered uses different IDs to expose the controls. It simply names them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. It makes sense to use such a controller preset if you plan to use a main preset that is just made for a bunch of knobs or buttons, no matter whether they are arranged as a grid or simply a row or a column. And that's what we are going to do now. I navigated back to the main compartment and here we have a new factory preset called numbered-fx parameters. It's a very simple generic preset. You can learn more about this preset by clicking on the notes button. For now, it's enough to know that this preset lets you control any parameter of the last focused fx, not including relearn itself. In order to show you how this works, I will add a simple equalizer plugin, reEQ. You can already see on the twister that the LED rings display some values. Each encoder on the twister now controls a different parameter of the equalizer. Encoder 1 controls parameter 1, encoder 2 controls parameter 2, and so on. If you show the list of parameters for this plugin, it's easier to see what's going on. ReEQ has many parameters, many more than the number of encoders on the MIDI fighter twister. Fortunately, this preset also supports switching between pages. Pushing the second encoder switches to page 2, and so on. And by the way, this preset doesn't just work with the MIDI fighter twister. It works with all controllers that have a bunch of knobs and buttons arranged in a row or a column. As long as you have a controller preset for it that exposes the knobs and buttons as numbers. Needless to say, when you focus a different plugin, it will control different parameters. Let's watch this in high speed. Let's get back to our main topic, units. Both units are active at the same time, just like instances. So now I use a platform M plus for general door control and the twister to control the currently or last focused plugin. Now let's take care of naming our units appropriately. We press the unit data button on the bottom right and enter a descriptive unit name. Better don't touch the unit key, it should stay as it is. Now we switch to the first unit, the main unit, which contains mappings for our platform M plus controller. Now it's easier to see which unit has which purpose. One advantage of using units is that you can often put your complete multi-controller setup into just one instance. Then you have everything together at one place. For example, it's easy now to export your complete setup to the clipboard. There are other advantages. For example, Relearn can now automatically add a unit whenever you connect a specific controller, loading suitable controller and main presets automatically. This is heavily used, for example, by the grid controller presets for playtime. But we will not go into detail about this right now. Another interesting aspect of using units is that you can switch your complete controller setup off or on just by disabling or enabling the relearn instance. And you can see the projection view of each unit in the new Helgobox app. Here you can see in detail which control element of your controller has which function. You can switch between different units directly in this app. The window title bar contains some nice gimmicks. You can switch between different visual themes, for example. Or you can enter full screen mode and disable the navigation bar on the left.
In addition to the relearn projection view, this app mainly contains the user interface for Playtime 2, the new clip launcher. If you want to know more about that, check my videos about Playtime 2. Now that you know what relearn units are, you are ready for the next episodes, which will be about concrete use cases of relearn. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode.